Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of 50 Numbers Family Math Night, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, The Number Skyline. So I got this idea when I saw a similar project on Pinterest, and I thought it would be an easy step to take it to the next level and tie in some numbers. So I'm going to describe to you um, the project, and then I'm going to talk about that math of tying in those numbers. So what you're going to need... Um, for this project is a whole bunch of buildings or um, black construction paper cut into a variety of rectangular um, sizes. You're going to need glue sticks. <clears throat> You're going to need um, windows or um, uh, colored squares. And what I did is I took um, these foam sheets, okay, large foam sheets like that, that I bought at a um, craft store and I used a die cut and I cut out a whole bunch of these um, squares but you don't need to do that. You can use colored construction paper or another thing that I discovered if, if you're doing this um, with older students um, is these little mosaic, they're, they're wooden pieces but they're super flat and they're, wooden, and they're colored and they're wooden mosaic um, pieces and I got these at the discount school supply, um, super cheap. But if you wanted to save space on your wall, if that was an issue, you could use these smaller ones. Then, of course, you'd use white glue, um, and then they wouldn't have to, to dry out flat. That would, be the, um, that would be the disadvantage because you wouldn't be able to hang them up right away. But it is an option, okay? So you do have options there. Um, you're going to need um, scissors as an option, I'll get to that in a second. And then you're going to need um, to print out your um, table tents and the activity sheets. And you're going to get those on our website at familymathnight.com under the resources section. Now I wanted um, to set this up, the station up, similar to the, um, the way that uh, the stations are set up in our kits. So we have a beginning, an intermediate, and an advanced level. So loosely K1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. And I bring that up because when you print out your activity sheets, they're going to look like this. Okay, and at the beginning level, um, um, the activities are usually represented by yellow. So I print the beginning yellow, beginning ones in yellow. The intermediate level is usually represented by green, and then our advanced is blue. So I print them out um, in those colors. But you know that's entirely up to you. Now at the beginning level, I also I don't know if you can see here, but I printed out, we're going to use different colored squares for our windows, and you can see that I printed out the names of those um, colors in the actual color um, itself to kind of give those kids a little visual um, to help them read those words. Um, I also, this, these may not print out well for you, um, uh, so I've also um, given you an option of printing it all um, in the, the um, black text as well, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to just read the, um, the directions on the, uh, the table tent, and I had um, these set up, obviously, across the table. But the first one says, choose a building, and then parentheses, I wrote, um, had black construction paper. So I'm going to choose one of these. And then they're going to use the inch squares and glue sticks and add rows of windows to your building, making sure the same number of windows are in each row. And then in parentheses I wrote, if you like, you can cut the squares to make smaller rectangles, but all rectangles in your building must be the same size. And the reason I did that was because I wanted the older students to have an option of making larger um, multiplication problems, and that's going to make sense in just a second. Um, but then I went ahead and forgot to put out the scissors that night, and so none of my buildings here represent that. I don't know if the students would have done that, but um, it was an option. It seemed like a Good idea at the time. Um, okay, so the, the third thing, the th third step, is to fill in the skyline activity sheet. Again, um, I have indicated here that yellow is beginning, green is intermediate, and blue is advanced. Um, and glue to the bottom of your building, just like these guys um, did it on here. Okay? Give your building to the station facilitator who will add it to our collaborative skyline. And she did, she kept running back and forth and adding buildings to that that evening. And then at the bottom I had the thought question, how many total windows do you think we'll have in our skyline by the end of the night? And it was interesting because I caught a couple of parents talking to their kids about that and getting into um, some strategies of counting numbers and bigger numbers. So um, that was really fun. 
Okay, so now I want to dive into the math or the numbers. So um, to make it a little bit easier for me to share this tiny thing with you, I've actually enlarged it. Okay, so the beginning um, level would look something like this. And I actually filled that one in for you. And I took this information from, I think, this building right here. So I just filled it in. My building has two orange squares. My building has one purple square and so forth. It could very well be that they end up with zero, okay, in one of these. And I think that's great because um, sometimes we forget about little old zero and, and little old zero needs to appear down here, you know, uh, in that equation. And then there you go, the equation at the bottom, okay? Um, so loosely kindergarten, first grade activity, a lot of counting uh, things, writing numerals and an equation. So super fun. Okay, so at the intermediate level, loosely again second and third grade they're getting into beginning multiplication um, so repeated addition and then multiplication equations and what i did here is i showed them give them an example of a um, rectangular array or um, the array model of multiplication an unbelievably great visual of our multiplication facts when they're represented this way and then of course we have a convention in math that that um, Everything that goes across this way is a row, and if it goes up and down like that, it's a column, and I put those on there to remind them. So I just filled this in according to what I have over here. So my building has two rows. In each row are three windows, and then the equation for that would be three plus three equals six. Now I have a challenge down here. Uh, this is where the multiplication um, equation comes in. My building has two rows and three columns, and the equation is two times three equals six. And of course, they can very easily count all of those. So I love the array model of multiplication for beginning multiplication um, and advanced multiplication, but that's a different video. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get to the advanced activity sheet by way of a study that happened a few years ago out of the UK where they took 223 students and collectively they completed 60 thousand multiplication problems. That's a lot of problems. Um, and uh, they learned a bunch of things. And one of the things that they learned was the multiplication fact that was the most difficult for these students. Now I want you to take a moment and reflect on this. Um, they were doing the multiplication facts 1 through 12. Of all of those facts, um, which one do you think um, that these students had the most difficult time with? And if you're like me, you were surprised, you're going to be surprised by the answer. So I'm going to share the answer um, to you by way of rectangular array. So the, the problem that these students had uh, the most um, difficult time with, or the, the fact, the multiplication fact, was 6 times 8, which really surprised me, actually. Um, the fact that came in the second most difficult was 8 times six, and that would kind of make sense, right? So right there I've showed you the commutative property of multiplication, six times eight and eight times six. Okay, so notice here that I have um, two different colored tiles, and that's important um, for uh, what I'm gonna share with you, not necessarily for uh, the uh, collaborative project that we did over here, but if I was doing this in the classroom with my third and fourth graders, and I actually do have them make rectangular arrays using tiles, and then we actually filled in the multiplication matrix. Um, the matrix uh, with all those squares on it is the very, is the array model of multiplication. So um, um, I would actually have students in the classroom using two different colors, because now I'm gonna tie in the distributive property of multiplication. So I don't know how those students in that study um, out of the UK learned their multiplication facts, but my guess would be that they learned it the traditional way, which is basically you just memorize them, right? You have, you have uh, flashcards and you just memorize um, your facts. What's exciting about math today is that there's a real emphasis on understanding um, the concepts on a very, uh, on a visual, very concrete um, level. And that's where the array model of multiplication comes in. Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, what I did here is, is I <clears throat> created that multiplication fact. This is six times eight, but I did it in two different color tiles, and the, the tiles need to make their own complete rectangle like that. And what this represents here really is six times three plus six times five. 
So we're offering students strategies for learning their multiplication facts. If six times eight is really hard for you, can you break it down into pieces that make sense? Okay, and that's why I broke this down into two pieces. You could do the same with this one here. You could break that down into pieces and then add those two individual pieces together to get that answer of 48. So that's what I did on the advanced skyline okay, activity sheet. And you can see here that I took that eight times six, okay, and I broke it down into five plus three times six. Now these are little teeny tiny pieces of paper. In the classroom, what I may do is actually do um, is have a, the, another uh, level in here. So it would be um, five times six plus three times six, and they can see these individual uh, rectangles on there. But for the purpose of the family math night event, um, I didn't have enough space on there to do that. Um, so you can see that this very simple um, skyline activity really packs a powerful punch in terms of getting in a lot of great um, um, uh, ideas and concepts in, um, in number and then up through um, multiplication. So have fun.